Now, cancer is never an easy topic to discuss, but it is important to be well informed. And thankfully, our next guest is a consultant, breast radiologist, here to educate us even more on everything we need to know. Welcome, Dr. Dana Haddad, one of my favorites. Of course, so glad to have you here. Now, I want to start off by asking you something, which is an alarming stat, but also one that's incredibly important for us to know. How common is breast cancer here in the UAE? Why are our rates and stats so different than the rest of the world? It's, uh, it is an alarming statistic. Uh, it's the top cancer diagnosed in the world, in the GCC, and also in the UAE. So if you take women alone, it's about 40% of all cancer cases uh, in women. And if you include men, it's still the number one diagnosed cancer at about 22%. So there's a lot of different theories as to why the incidence here is actually rising. Uh, part of it is we have lower fertility rates at the moment. Um, we're having less children or having children later. We're living longer. Uh, possibly environmental factors might actually play into it. Um, but also, counterintuitively, the fact that we're actually screening more, we're actually picking up cancers earlier. So there might be something called a lead time bias as well. What about the fact that women here are getting cancer at a younger age? They are. So if you look at the rest of the world, uh, usually breast cancer, the, the average age is like 60 and above. And in the UAE, it's early 40s. So part of it is we, we're just a generally a younger population, right? So it could be a little bit of skewed data. But even when you try to control for that, um, we are seeing cancer rates younger and younger. And not just breast cancer, but all different kinds of cancers. So uh, still a lot of research needs to be done to figure out why. Now, it's, uh, it's interesting that you say that uh, even in men, it's one of the highest uh, recorded cancers. Um, I know most of the focus comes to women getting uh, breast cancer tests, obviously. Uh, how important is it for men? Should we wait for signs or is it a good idea for us to go every several years? Yeah, that's a really good question. So uh, I just want to clarify that it's only up to 1% of cases that can actually occur in men. Um, but obviously, for example, if you have a gene mutation such as the BRCA1 or BRCA2, that could increase your risk. Um, but the recent guidelines actually do not recommend regular screening unless there is a very strong family history. So at least two members of your first degree relatives um, or uh, there is a gene mutation. Um, female relatives or male relatives? Uh, both, uh, actually, both. Yeah, even with, with uh, females. So if they have a relative that's a male and had breast cancer, that could also predispose them to be at a higher risk. And we have a lot of different tools right now um, that can kind of calculate your lifetime risk of developing breast cancer. But for males, I think what's important for them is just to understand that it could happen to them um, and that they m need to just check themselves regularly and even just go to a doctor, usually starting at the age of 35 if you're at high risk. So just to ask you, with that background of young people getting breast cancer, talk to us about screening. Because in, in most parts of the world, like you said, in the Western world, for example, where women are getting breast cancer in their early 60s, um, we start screening at 40, 45. So what do we do with our women who are now getting breast cancer in their 40s? You know, how do we screen them? Exactly. So. Screening is very controversial, as you know, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Haria. So there's some countries that start at 40 and they do it every year. There's some countries that do it every two years. In the UK, they do it every three years, starting at 45 or 50. Mm -hmm. um, but we tend to follow the American uh, guidelines here in, in the UAE. And I think it's really important because obviously the numbers don't lie, right? So we're seeing cancers earlier and earlier. The majority of cancers that we're having here are in women in their 40s. They're like the most productive years of their life. They have children to look mm -hmm. after, jobs to go to. And unfortunately, the younger you get breast cancer, the more aggressive it can be. So, you know, the, the major recommendation here is 40 and above, if you are average risk, you need to start with a mammogram. And if you have dense breasts, you need a screening ultrasound as well. And then if you're at high risk, you might need to start your mammogram earlier even than 40. Mm -hmm. And then you might need something called an MRI as well. So. It's very important. I'm glad you brought this up because just uh, before we could start recording, Dina was asking me if I've had a mammogram and I was saying, no, probably I'm, I have this, I'm not eligible because of my age because I'm below 40, and uh, I, but I have done ultrasound. So what would you say are similar, if not some popular misconceptions or myths that you would like to bust surrounding breast cancer screening? Okay, so the first one is mammograms. Mammograms do not cause cancer. It is really um, one of the biggest myths out there and it's it's a very dangerous myth that's propagated by the social media and um, so that would be the number one um, there's absolutely no evidence to suggest that mammograms cause cancer CTs on the other hand for example have at least 30 times the dose of a mammogram and you might need several CTs over several years to even cause one cancer 
I think the second myth that's important to know is, oh, you know, I don't have a family history of breast cancer, so this is not really going to affect me. But actually, 75% of women who develop breast cancer have absolutely no family history to speak of. So what I would say is it's really important to just have that conversation with your doctor. Usually at age 25, you should try to have a risk assessment done. Um, and I kind of always say this, there's like four pillars of being breast cancer aware, right? It's like knowing your risk, knowing your body and knowing what's normal for you, getting screened at the appropriate time, and also making healthy lifestyle choices. And I think if you stick by those four, four rules, then you can't really go wrong. But unfortunately, we can't predict, right? We can't predict exactly who's gonna get breast cancer and who's not. Um, and also, one more myth, if you don't mind, is that a lot of women, you have no idea, I'm sure you see this all the time, Dr. Huria, is, um, you know, they blame themselves for getting breast cancer. Yeah. And it well, is how not. Does, how does that even happen? <laughs> yeah, and women, I think in general, we're very good at blaming ourselves for things that are really just not yeah, our fault. Yeah, there's a lot right? of shame. So, yeah. yeah. Can I just ask you very quickly before we let you go, women who do have a family history, such, such as myself, what do you recommend for them? Because obviously there's all different kinds of testing. Yeah, absolutely. So again, get your risk assessment at an early age. Um, you can get yearly ultrasounds until you need to start your mammograms. Uh, in some countries, they start at the age of 30. Here we're a little bit more conservative and we start at age 35. Um, so the way that I usually recommend it is you'll do a mammogram. Usually younger women have denser breasts, you'll need an ultrasound, and then six months later you might need an MRI. So every six months you're kind of getting something and then you'll be safe, <laughs> safe and sound. And I, I've said this to you before, right, Dina? It's just kind of give that burden to me. Let me carry it for you. You said something um, to me that yeah. changed my life, which is we're <laughs> testing you so often that you're so likely to catch it in early stage and not have to go through all these different things. Exactly. And it, it, it relieved me so much. So thank you.